This week, you ask, we answer. How do we find a campsite? We will break down all the ways we scour the internet for the next place to park our rig. Plus, a tip for making sure your slide doesn't hit anything every time. And we answer our question regarding batteries and converters. This is the RV Miles Podcast. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean, dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all to just right layers perfect for changing weather to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays. Every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean, be an outsider. Welcome to episode 202 of the RV Miles Podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. Very excited about this show for this week. We have had this question over and over. We've talked about it in the past, but... It changes every year, and there's always different ways we figure this out, but we're going to be talking about our tips and tricks for finding a campsite because a lot of people are struggling with that right now. But, you know, it's not as bad as I think some people make it sound right now. Yeah, and I don't don't know if it's necessarily our tips and tricks. It's just our process. Yeah. This is the process we go through, whether or not it's uh, everyone out camping during the summer season or the process we go through during the shoulder season. Yeah. Like, how do we actually go about deciding which campground to stay at once we've decided we are going somewhere? So that's coming up a little bit later in the show. But first, we want to answer a question. This actually came in from uh, our friend Beth, who uh, had seen this question in lots of Facebook groups happening right now and thought this would be something good for us to answer. So. Uh, The question is, if you are parked permanently at a campsite or if you're always plugged in when you're parked at campsites, do you actually need a battery or can your RV, can your DC stuff, your lights, your water pump, your fans, can all of that stuff just run off the converter without the battery? And the answer is technically they will run without the battery. But it's not a really good thing to do because your converter is not designed for that type of instantaneous constant load. So it can really wear out your converter really quickly. Your converter is what converts AC power, which is what you plug into in the campground and what most of us have in houses that we plug into, into DC power. And DC power in an RV runs your fans, your lights, your pumps, that sort of stuff. Anything that will run when you're not plugged in is on DC power. Your air conditioner, your microwave, that's usually on AC power. So if you didn't have a battery, the power is bypassing that sort of uh, that sort of thing that evens out the load. And that converter just has to come on and off and on and off every time you demand it to do that. And that can make the converter heat up really badly, which is why your converters have a fan in them. That cools them down, and, and and heat is the enemy of anything electrical, but converters especially. So that fan is working hard, and if that fan goes out, then the then it's not cooling. So it is it is always best to have a battery in there. The good news is, if you're just trying to be cheap about it and not really don't want to <laughs> go buy a new battery and put one in because you feel like you don't need that battery storage, the good news is you can just throw a used battery in there. Don't get like a completely dead one, but you can just throw a, any old deep cycle battery in there if you're not worried about using that battery when you're plugged in. Now, I will say as well, though, <laughs> there have been so many times when we've been plugged in at a campground and the power goes out. It is so mm-hmm. common for the power to go out in campgrounds. So it is nice, even if you are permanently parked somewhere, uh, or if you're only using full hookup campgrounds, to have those batteries just in case the power goes out and you got some time 
to still have some lights. So that was the long answer. <laughs> I'm going to give you the short answer. No. No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, we want to let you know that the registration for the RV Miles meetup happening in November is a officially open. We talked last week about the date. We kind of gave a little bit of information. Well, now the Verde Ranch RV Resort is ready to take your reservation. If you can join us on November 3rd through the 7th, it's four nights. The cost is $48 a night for full hookups plus tax. That's a discount coming from our friends at Verde Ranch RV Resort. And right now we're still kind of like putting the schedule together. We're thinking about a day trip, maybe to a national park site. That seems very on brand for Jason and Abby to want to go do something like that. We've talked a little bit about having a meet and greet on the first night, some desserts and drinks on the last night, but really it's just an opportunity for all of us to get together, for us to have the privilege to meet you and just enjoy kind of getting back to something a little bit more familiar here in 2021. The event is free on our end. You're only Mm -hmm. paying for the campsite. It's really just a hangout. Um, but if you if you have registered, please, uh, and you haven't gone and, and, and filled out our registration form that, so we can get all your information, please do that. It's on the article on the website. We'll also link to that article in the show notes. And there are 18 spots available. It is more than half sold out already, so it's going to sell out for sure. We might be able to push the number of spots a little bit, but we're going to see yeah. about that a little bit later. Yeah, but we're just really excited to be able to do this. And we just wanted to officially say here, since we've kind of just been not necessarily teasing it, but just sharing yeah. information in little bursts, that everything now is officially a go. So just head over to rvmiles.com slash 202, and you'll find the link for the article that's going to have all the information to contact the resort to book your spot and the link to click on to fill out the form so that we can plan on meeting you. And if you can't make it, hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of these coming up. So be on the lookout for that. If this is a dumpster fire, we might not. Maybe not. (laughs) Maybe not. (laughs) And I don't mean that by the people attending. I mean that just by Jason and Abby's execution. (laughs) Who knows? But we are kind of toying around a little bit with trying to do something that coincides with the Tampa RV show. Because we are planning to be there. That's our stop before Disney World. So kind of look for that in January if November in the Southwest does not work for you. We are busy booking our travel. Well, we're, we're, well. we should be busy booking our travel. We, we're figuring things out and, uh, yeah. and that's causing us to look at campgrounds in a deeper mode than we have been lately. So in a moment, we'll be back with our, our process for finding a campsite. I hope you have pen and paper ready. It's a process. (laughs) We'll be right back. (laughs) FMCA is the world's largest nonprofit RV club, and they host two international conventions every single year. The next convention is nicknamed Spirit of Wyoming, July 7th through the 10th, 2021 in Gillette, Wyoming. That's coming right around the corner. It'll be FMCA's 103rd convention. You can camp on the grounds for the entire event or experience the fun for a single day. Everyone is welcome. You do not need to be an FMCA member, or even an RV owner to attend. Find products and services you need for the RVing lifestyle. Tour the latest RVs, one of which may be your next. Soak up RVing knowledge at more than 100 educational seminars and enjoy daytime and evening entertainment, including big name music like Free Dog Night. Yow! FMCA is running a membership promotion. It's $60 for one year of membership or $50 for one year of renewal with the code one year. You can save 30% off instantly, but hurry. It's a limited time offer and ends July 6th at midnight. RV season is here, but the change of seasons also brings rain, mud, pollen, and other elements that you have to waste your time cleaning or worse, that can end up damaging your vehicle. Whether you own a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a truck camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free warranty to guarantee it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire has just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protect it from UV rays. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use the promo code RV Miles at checkout.
Okay, it's time to talk about finding a campsite, a campground, a campsite. We, uh, we are often in a situation where we figured out where we want to go. We know what we want to visit. Uh, we know how long we're going to be there. But then deciding, then looking for all the different campgrounds in that area and deciding on which one to choose and why it becomes a, a challenge. It takes, it's a lot of work well, to do. For us, too, as full-timers, the other question becomes once we know where we're going, well, how long do we want to take from point A to get to point B? Is this going to be a quick, yeah. like we want to get there as fast as possible, or because of other circumstances work, are we going to need to slow this down? And and you and I have gone through some phases here of like, <laughs> you spend most of the time finding the campsites and then you hate doing it and then I do it yeah. for several months and then I th- think I get burned out on it and you take it over uh, and, and it it becomes a thing where I you know it's I, I, I guess what I'm getting at here is that we don't have like some super system that we're about to share with you. Oh no, this don't don't think you're about to see a magic unicorn. <laughs> but it's hopefully not <laughs> the amount of time that we've spent doing this we can you know give you some advice that helps you do it a little bit quicker. And it is going to be different based on whether you're a full-timer or a part-timer or, um, or just, you know, sort of a weekender type person. But, uh, but that is sort of where I think you start is that you start to assess the kind of needs that you have Mm -hmm. for this booking. Is it going to be one night? Is it going to be a couple nights? Is it going to be your destination for a week or more? Yeah, so let's just, you know, we're going to talk about our process, recognizing that that might look a little bit different for you. Maybe you'll be able to, you know, grab little bits of it here and there. So the first thing Jason mentioned was we always talk about, is this just an overnight stop? Is this going to be a longer period of travel where we need to stop at several different places before reaching our end destination? Or are we looking to just move from one place to the next one and then be there for a long period of time? And and why does that why does that play into the choice of the campground? Well, a lot of it, if it's a quick overnight stop on our way to the campground or to the destination, well, a lot of times we're going to look at something like a Walmart, a Cracker Barrel, a Harvest Hosts, or a Boondockers Welcome, unless our next destination is something like a state park, a federal park, or it is boondocking itself. Then what we're going to do is maybe think about that one night being at a full hookups so that we can keep the batteries topped off, the tank filled, the tanks empty, so that when we get to that next destination where we don't have that option, we're starting clean, we're starting fresh. Yeah, and sometimes the the convenience of a, of a commercial campground that is more often than not going to be full hookups right off the highway with pull through sites is, is worth paying a little bit extra for. We made the mistake so many times early on of trying to be cheap and, and getting an affordable, maybe a state park or a federal park way off of our route for just an overnight. And you waste that in fuel easily, but also your time. You have to you have to think about what your time is worth. And that doesn't just go for overnights. That goes for extended stays as well. If you're going to be visiting some place like Yellowstone where it takes, you know, 3 hours to drive around the lower half of the park, do you want to be driving another hour into the park every time? What, the extreme example is Disney World. We're heading to Disney World in January. We're staying at Fort Wilderness. And uh, this will be our first time camping at, at Fort Wilderness, but we've been to Disney several times. And we've stayed both on property and we've stayed off property. And we've always found it's actually better to have a shorter vacation and spend the extra money to stay on property because it takes you minutes to get into the park instead of an hour and then you're not paying for parking and all that sort of stuff. But that's sort of the extreme of it. But that that go that comes into effect in a lot of different places. So once we kind of have an idea of what our travels are going to look like, that's when we go to the sites that we use that we're interested in. So again, there's Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome for those quick overnights. Then from there We always start at recreation.gov and Reserve America or the state park of the state that we're in. Those are always our two 
first stops. And that even goes for, you know, the shorter periods of travel where we're just doing two or three days all the way up to two weeks. We have done two weeks at a time in a federal campground and we absolutely love it. You're not going to get full hookups, but that's a choice that we make because we really do love federal campgrounds. So recreation.gov, Reserve America, or the State Park Campground, if none of those work out, then we start moving into the private park sector. Yeah, Reserve America, it, a lot of people get confused about how this works, but Reserve America used to be the website that deals with all the federal parks, mm -hmm. and it is not anymore. No. They lost that contract, but they still manage a lot of the state parks. So a lot of state park systems are in there. And we we also really love county and city parks. And yeah. sometimes those are the very, very best parks. But it is very difficult to, you know, sort of see them in sort of like some sort of system-wide thing. So those are often the last places we're looking because then we're sort of like just having to scout them out, right? Yeah, especially if it starts becoming a little bit difficult to find the campsites that we need. But those are really time-consuming. And so if our time to try and figure all this out is really, really short... Well, we're just going to go with these quick steps. It's going to be recreation.gov. Then it's going to be the state park. Then we're going to move into the private park. And then when we do move into the private park, once we do a general sweep of what's in that area, there are a few websites. And actually, we do this regardless of the campground that oh, yeah. we're going to. We head over to Campendium. I have found when I took over doing our reservations, especially during COVID, and that was really the first time that I had ever been aggressively the leader in booking all of our campsites. I think for the first three, three and a half years of our travel, Jason did probably 80% of all the searching and vetting of campgrounds. Campendium to me is just an incredible resource uh, because of the information I can get regarding Wi-Fi, but also because I feel like it's one of the only spaces where I'm reading reviews that I feel are not influenced by any other outside factor other than it's the RVer sharing their experience yeah, at, at that park. There are like there are other websites like campgroundreviews.com, but when you head over to something like Yelp or Google, then you get a lot of people reviewing a place that maybe have never camped before, you know, they maybe they maybe don't understand yeah. things. It, it it becomes kind of a mess. And, and sometimes they're not even about the actual campground they, they visited. It, it, it's, it becomes difficult, even though you might find more reviews on Google reviews. They're very well written and thought out on a place like Campendium. Yeah, and I do not, you know, we don't work with Campendium. We have no association with them whatsoever. And I do not also mean by my praise of Campendium to shortchange any other campground-focused website that's doing something similar. It's just for me and the way I visually see things, I like that when I go in there, I've got all the information plus the, I can click over into their website. I can see what's going on with cell service and Wi-Fi. I can also read the reviews. I can see pictures. And I'm sure that there are a lot of other websites that do that. It's just, again, finding what works for you and the time that you have to do these things. So that's kind of the first place I go to. But the, the important thing here is that we actually do go in and read the individual reviews that people write, not just looking at the star rating yeah. and, and and the amenities that are offered because the, the reviews is where you really glean the information that pertains to you because everybody has different needs when it comes to a campground. Yeah. You might not care what the bathroom is like because you don't ever plan to use it. You might really care what the bathroom is like because you absolutely need it because you have a pop-up, for instance, that doesn't have a bathroom. That kind of information is is only going to be found by reading the individual reviews. Yeah, and there's a few things I'm looking at when I'm reading reviews anywhere, not just on Campendium, but anywhere when I'm looking to vet a campground and whether or not this is going to work for us. And that is, I'm looking for keywords like cell service and Wi-Fi, specifically our carriers. I'm also looking for, you know, talking about camping with kids uh, the level sites, um, the size of the site, that's going to become even more important for us as we're moving into a 42-foot fifth wheel 
So those are some of the keywords that I grab regardless of where I'm looking. Now, if Campendium doesn't work out for me and I can't get that information that I need, then I'm going to start branching out into other websites. And I'm also going to utilize Google Earth. I think Google Earth is an incredible resource to decide, especially in a federal park, if we only have electricity at that site, how far is the water spigot from this particular campsite? Mm -hmm. Would we be able to run our hose if we needed to fill up the fresh tank? You know, how far are we away from the dump station? I don't particularly like to be really close to a dump station. They've started to, on recreation.gov, you can click and get the satellite view right right yeah. then and there. Um, but if it's not on recreation.gov, sometimes you, you have to just figure this stuff out on your own. But Yeah, and I've noticed that a few times with um, National Forest campgrounds. I've really just had to go over to Google Earth and, and see if I can figure that out. But, you know, and then also YouTube is a really great resource as well. If you are really hoping to find someone who's just doing a drive through of a campground, bless those people who do drive throughs of campgrounds. Yeah, you can also find lots of drive throughs of campgrounds over on campgroundviews.com. Yes. And they're starting to do a lot of 360 tours. Mark has been really working on doing 360 tours of lots of federal campgrounds over there. And I think that's a resource that you really was in your uh, tool bag yeah. when you were doing it. And it's one that now, as we are getting ready to really hit back out on the road, I look forward to really trying to put that into my tool bag as well, because I do tend to be a creature of habit. And then all these other wonderful things are popping up all around me. And I'm like, no, but I have a, I have a, a standard <laughs> way that I do things. So an another thing you, you can glean a little bit from the, the sort of satellite view stuff and the, and the walkthroughs and drive-throughs is, is it like a clean, nice place? Like that, yeah. that, that's an important thing to us. We don't care about a heck of a lot of amenities, um, but we care that it's clean, that the people are nice, and then it's nice if it's got a playground. You know? Yeah, you can't, you know, obviously in a drive through figure out if the people are nice. Right. That's just something you will learn as you arrive. But if the place is a mess, you can you can bet that the people aren't nice. <laughs> They're just, or they're just busy. <laughs> well, that's that. <laughs> too or busy, too busy if, for their if job. They're, they're either not nice or they're not available. You know, or they're just not available. So you know, that's kind of one of the things that we do look at. And then you know, also all of this plays into cost as well. Cost is very important to us, and we know it's important to a lot of other people as well. Especially as we start to see campgrounds tick up in price a little bit. There's no denying that it's gotten a little bit more expensive this year to camp. And so that is also something that we have to be very, very mindful of, the budget that we have set. And then how is that going to influence and how, you know, if we are going to spend a little bit more here, then we need to try and offset that somewhere else. And that can also influence our travels. Yeah. We may have to bypass that really fantastic urban location that we wanted to go to because it was just too expensive for the campground or the national park that, you know, we'll have to catch that at a different time because unfortunately it's, you know, to access it, we'd have to, again, utilize private parks. It's just a little too expensive. Yeah. And, and when you're looking at the cost of a campground, it's really important to realize what the real cost is, not just the cost of the site, what are the other costs involved? So, for instance, is there an online booking fee that can range from a dollar or oh, up to yeah. like fifteen dollars? Is there a kid tax, as we like to call it, as families like to call it, the kid tax, where they charge you an extra amount of money per person, more over two or four, or whatever it is? It's very hard for me to click book when I'm paying extra for our kids. Yeah. And is it a state park that you've never been to, but you'll have to get a state park pass or pay that daily entrance fee that's going to really bring you up at a cost? A lot of state parks are getting very, very expensive right now. So sometimes private parks can be cheaper. And, and this also comes into how long you're going to stay because discounts are often offered at private parks for weekly or monthly stays. And you can get a little bit of relief from the price and that some state park systems though do have things like where they have like 
uh, if you stay a third day, you get it for mm-hmm. half off or something like that. Texas does something yeah. like that. So those are just sort of the way that we put it all together. I know it sounds like an awful lot, but you know, when you sit down and you just open up your laptop, these are all the things that are going on inside of our heads. But it's usually it can be a pretty quick process unless we're just somewhere that's really hard to figure out. And I will admit, I have sat for sometimes two or three hours just trying to figure out a 200 mile radius of our route because there's not a lot of options or the options that aren't fitting what we need and things like that. So, you know, have patience with it. Sometimes it's not always going to go as quick as you would like. So as we wrap this up, I think it's very obvious how you would go about finding for us the private park. You're going to have websites like KOA and Jellystone. And then the independent private park is hopefully going to have its own Yeah, and you can search on a place like Campendium and see the different campgrounds and then usually click on their websites or their phone numbers right there. Uh, If they don't have a website, uh, that's the first campsite that goes to the bottom of the list for us because we just don't have time to deal with that if you don't have the information online. It also sometimes says something about the park. But let's say you want to boondock or, or we're interested in boondocking. So some of the websites we use for that, we've talked about them already, is recreation.gov and Campendium. But we also really like freecampsites.net. That's been a great resource as well for finding some sort of hidden gems. Like that's how we found that abandoned Idaho State mm-hmm. Park. That was so much fun. So those are what we use for boondocking. If we're looking for overnight parking, then we're utilizing Harvest Hosts, Boondockers Welcome, and OvernightParking.com. That is also another fantastic resource we hadn't mentioned yet. Before we move on, I want to mention a little bit about availability because that's on a lot of people's minds right yes. now in, in figuring out like how to find a site that is open and available to you can be a challenge. And one of the things that you can do with a lot of the state and federal parks is find out what their booking window is, because sometimes it's shorter. It's, you know, might be six months uh, and and make sure you're booking on that first day. Sometimes that doesn't really help at all. But uh, then you can also look around to see if there are other campgrounds that may have a different booking window. Sometimes there are ones that have like a two or three week window where you can only book up to two weeks out. And, and those campgrounds can be a little bit easier to get into. But then if you really need a site in an area and you're just not finding anything, your best bet is always going to be a private park that doesn't have individually reserved sites, meaning you don't get to choose the site. And the reason for that is is they they can really play the Tetris game as new bookings come in and really fill up their campground evenly. Whereas when everybody gets to choose their site, there's lots of holes. Here's a day available. Here's two days available. Here's three days available. And we'll often do that. We'll book those and we'll site hop and it's not fun, but we will do the site hop game sometimes. But uh, availability can be a challenge. And I think your best bet right now when when there is no availability is is to try those private parks without reservable sites. And if they're full up, get on their waiting list. And take a deep breath. Yes. Because there are campsites out there to be found. And yes, it is very, very busy, but that's also a really wonderful thing. More people are learning about camping and experiencing something that all of us here love so, so very much. So take a breath. There is somewhere out there, somewhere out there, There is a campsite for you, we promise. (laughs) So let's take a break. And then when we come back, we'll have Fresh Tank, Black Tank. And more. Did that feel weird to you? Because I just took like your whole little thing. Yeah, you took your time with it too. I know. Well, I was was mesmerized by the look on your face. You were in shock that I was taking it. (laughs) Taking a lot for me lately. (laughs) Have you booked your next campground yet? These days, an available campsite can be harder to find than Bigfoot. RV Spot Drop is a new website that delivers canceled and unsold campsites right to your inbox. No more wasting hours calling campgrounds. Just tell RV Spot Drop your locations, dates, and amenities, and you'll get an email alert the moment a matching site is available. 
RV Spot Drop annual membership costs just $10. And RV Miles listeners can get 20% off by visiting rvspotdrop.com and entering code RVMILES, all one word. That's rvspotdrop.com, code RVMILES. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV. And the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector, made by Hughes Autoformers, beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small, affordable part you can replace yourself. They'll even give you a free surge module in the first two years. And now they have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoformers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at HughesAutoformers.com. It is time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? Okay, my black tank goes to a very specific Iowa rest stop off of 80 that we have been to many times between the Quad Cities in Kansas City. (laughs) And and the reason why I'm black tanking you rest stop is because you didn't seem to want to finish the walls between the stalls in the bathroom. And you stopped at about... Oh, I think they're maybe like five one, five two. So when if I that. enter, yeah. So when I enter into the stall, if someone is right next to me, and let's say they're standing up and finishing up, and I walk in, we are as Jason and I are right now having a moment. Yeah, or, or you're sitting down, and then they stand up, and you're like, "Hi." <laughs> I know it is. I do not understand it. See, this now, is why I don't understand th- certain components is, of a men's restroom. This is the problem, though. That you you drove this last drive, so we're in Kansas oh, City now. How's that the problem? I'll, I'll explain. We're in Kansas City now. Uh, we just got here. Yes, visiting Abby's family, and I normally drive the long distance drives, and Abby did this time because I needed to do some work. So, but what Abby doesn't know is where the good rest stops <laughs> in Iowa are, because Iowa has some beautiful brands making new rest stops and i usually stop at those and we stopped at that one and i was like oh i forgot to tell you jason (laughs) i don't you know we're not gonna have this conversation here on the pod but i think i've spoken to you before about mom bladder and listen when i have to go i have to go and if there's a rest stop i have to stop at it i'm not gonna go oh that's not the good one i'm gonna keep going 29 miles we had already missed the the good one and i normally stop at that one just for you because i know you're very sweet so i do hope that this particular rest area gets demolished and they rebuild a new one and that they decide to put in walls Uh, that give some privacy i remember that rest area being like that from (laughs) when i was a kid it is no there it has not changed since the 80s it's it we're never stopping there again (laughs) because i got sandwiched in between two women and we all we all just felt so awkward. <laughs> it was so awkward. All right, what's in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank goes to new campers. I just feel like I want to say to if you are a new camper listening to this or a new camper watching this, I just want to say welcome and welcome to the world of RVing and camping. And we are so glad that you're here. You know, camping season is officially underway and there is a lot of talk about all the newbies out there. And I think sometimes they get a bad rap. Look, and we know that it that it is a certain type of person that makes the messes, that trashes <laughs> campgrounds and stuff. It, and it has nothing to do with whether you're new to this or if you've been doing it for a long time. Those people have been out there for a very long time doing that stuff. There are certainly new people doing that stuff. There are more people camping, but... Just the fact you're new has absolutely nothing to do with any of it. We're no. happy that you're here. So camping. very happy. And I also, you know, want to say that each person is responsible for their own actions out there at the campground and out there in our beautiful country. And, you know, again, it's about not lumping a whole group of people because of one individual's choice. Like we are all responsible for our own choices. So welcome to your very first summer camping season, and we hope that you and whoever you are enjoying that campsite with are having a wonderful time. 
All right, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? Uh, there's a, 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 and I apologize because I, I can't remember who shared this with us, but a, a, a listener shared this with me so I could share it with you. There is a major bear spray recall happening right now. So if you have bear spray, you're going to want to check it to see if it is the Sabre brand. And, uh, and there are a few different models that they make that have been recalled because they don't spray. <laughs> and it's Yikes. hundreds of thousands of bear spray canisters. There's a little test that, that they have you do to see if it works or not. And then you get a new one if not. And all you have to do is test it. You don't have to take it back or anything. Don't have to throw it away if it works. But if you have bear spray, you're going to want to do this and test it because Obviously, you don't want to be in a situation where you need bear spray and your bear spray doesn't work. Uh, so head over to the show notes for this episode. We'll have the link there to the article I put together uh, sharing all the information about this Sabre Frontiersman bear spray recall because I think it's a really important thing for a piece of safety equipment like that. I know more than 100,000 were sold in Canada. I don't know exactly how many were sold in the u.s but i'm sure it was also a lot they got a lot of bears in canada so they do so it might be more up there but but it, it's a it's a it's a big recall so just head over to rvmiles.com slash 202 so that you can read that article for yourself and if you own bear spray you can check on the can all right what is in your fresh tank boy uh <laughs> I, uh, I'm trying to lose some weight. That's, that's my, my fresh tank is myself. I'm going to pat Aww. myself on the back. Look, it has been a long, I've, I've started down this path a few times over the last couple of years. And, you know, I know that anybody that goes through this is like, this is going to be the time. Right. But like, I don't know. I, I tried to, I tried to, I opened a bag of Cheez-Its and I tried to eat a few and I was like, Ugh, mm. I don't want this. Uh, and I've gone five days in a row without going over my calories, counting the calories, <laughs> using the Lose It app, which is awesome. Oh, I love uh, that app. So, I, I'm, look, I'm putting this on here so that I can say that I'm doing this. <laughs> and, and then that will give me more motivation to, to make it happen. But, look, I've lost a few pounds already. I'm really proud of you. And it's not so much that because the number is getting smaller, but it's just that you are deciding to be more proactive about your health. And, you know, this is something that we talk a lot about because we do have a, a teenager and, you know, we want to recognize body positivity. And so one of the ways that we can show our son body positivity is by taking care of our own bodies. And I'm trying to do that myself. We're trying to do this together. We're trying to do this with our children so that we can do this for as long as possible. Yeah, it's not really about losing weight. It's about being a healthier person. Yeah. And I have not been a healthy person. <laughs> I'm going to just say that. No, listen. My mom brings over this video for us to watch today that's called the pasta sandwich. <laughs> and it is, if you take some French bread, and let's have that French bread, and then you're going to scoop out the insides of that French bread. So now you've got this cavern. They are taking spaghetti fettuccine alfredo and they are dumping it into the inner part of this bread so they're turning it into a pasta sandwich then they are taking the sauce they're like of, ladling on alfredo sauce yes and i am sitting there like oh my gosh i would get so sick i was like the sauce is just taking it to a whole other level this guy goes the sauce is what does it for me <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I would eat that so fast. <laughs> but I won't. All right. It's time to close with our tip of the week. This tip comes to us from Ross over at RV Tips and Travels. He has a great tip for lining up your RV in a campsite before you put the slides out to make sure that you're not going to hit that slide on something before you've unhooked everything and all that using simply something that you already have, a broom. One thing we all do when we're setting up at a campground, especially one with a lot of trees around us, is check for clearance so we don't hit anything when we open our slide out. Now, if you've ever done this with a floppy tape measure, you know it could be a pretty cumbersome process. So you probably already carry a broom with you. Simply put your broom against your RV wall and tape where the slide ends. If you have multiple slides, use multiple colors of tape. And look at that, one-handed, super easy to determine where your slide is going to end. And that's it, guys. Pretty easy, right? 
little tip to save you some time and potential damage on your slide out. Our thanks to Ross for that incredible tip. And I'm absolutely doing that because we say all the time, I walk up to him and I go, you think this slide's going to clear? And then he does this thing where he puts his arms I, out. I have it he's measured like, on my arms. Yeah. Like my, my arms now will have, will have new slides. I don't know. My arm, my, but elbow to elbow to me is our current slide. And then I always look at you like, are you serious? You're like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, my elbow length has not changed. Yeah, it's elbow to elbow. So we're we're doing the broom, and we're going to have four different markings on it now for all four of our slides. This elbow to the top of this pinky is 18 inches. That is fantastic, hun. When I don't I used, know what to say to that. When I used to hang lights in theater, <laughs> right, you, the, the standard distance you hang lights apart is is a minimum of 18 inches, and usually it's right on 18 inches. So I didn't use a tape measure. I'd do that, boom, lay my arm down, hang a light. You are just a jack of all trades, babe. <laughs> you just you are out there hanging those lights while I was on the stage wondering when I was going to get some light on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is it for this week of the show. And hey, as we ask every single week, if you are enjoying RV Miles, and we sure hope you are, please head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a five-star review. Your five-star review is putting RV Miles in front of a whole new generation of campers. So thank you so very much in advance. Of course, if you would like to chat with Jason and I, the very best place to find us is over at the RV Miles Facebook group. It's 10,600 of some of the nicest people out there. And then, oh, do you need like some gear or something new for your RV? Because who doesn't? And you're going to go to Amazon? Well, we would like to come with you. Just go to amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles before you just Twitter off into the Amazon world. And we get a little kickback on anything that you purchase, and that helps support RV Miles. So thank you very much in advance. Until next week, be well, stay safe, and keep logging those RV Miles. Bye, everybody.